Hopefully you've heard by now that in July of 2023, Universal Analytics will be going away and all we'll have left will be GA4 or Google Analytics 4. So in July of 2023, any hits on your website, conversion tracking, and audiences will no longer be recorded. So this is important to know that if you're using any sort of remarketing audiences from Universal Analytics, you should start creating those audiences within GA4 right now. We already have a video about creating GA4 audiences, but that was recorded over a year ago. It's out of date. I wanted to refresh it, show you how you can create audiences within GA4 and import them into your Google Ads. I'm on the homepage of GA4 and the process to create audiences in GA4 is pretty easy. I have no problem saying, I actually think it's easier to create audiences in GA4 than Universal Analytics. And you're gonna see why I say that pretty soon. So to get to audiences, we need to head on over to configure and there we see audiences. Now we do see a few examples from the older video that I created, but the two on the bottom, all users and purchasers were two audiences that were automatically created by GA4. And after I linked GA4 to Google ads, which I'll show you how to do towards the end of the video, those two audiences were automatically imported into Google ads. We're the PayMedia Pro site, can't buy anything on our website. I understand there will be e-commerce based audiences, but I'm not gonna cover that too much because it doesn't apply to our site. The two other audiences on top, blog visits and Google ads visitors, those are two audiences I created for the previous demo. But let's see what types of audiences we can create within GA4. And there are a lot. I'm not gonna have enough time to go through every single type of audience you can create. My goal is to really show you where you can create audiences and how to get them into Google ads. But I still wanna cover some of the audiences just to give you an idea. And right away, this is why I like GA4 better for creating audiences. They have some general templates of very common audiences that a lot of advertisers are going to make anyway. Users that have been recently active. There's non-purchasers, if you just wanna get in front of people who visited the website and not bought anything. There's purchasers to use as either a next step remarketing tactic or potentially as an exclusion. And then we see a couple examples of time-lapse audiences. There are also other templates that you can use if you wanna create an audience for specific demographics creating audiences off of age, gender, language, interests, country ID. If I go back up, have to hit templates again, we see one for technology, looking at the platform, operating system, device category, device brand and model. Cancel out of that one. Head on up to templates one more time. And there's acquisition. This one is a personal favorite of mine. Creating an audiences off of a previous source. So in our case, we get a lot of referral traffic from YouTube. So I can create an audience just off of anyone who visited from YouTube. Click apply. I can change the membership duration if I want to. Many of our clients run ad campaigns on several channels. First one that pops in my head is LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is known to be a little bit more expensive. However, the targeting is very precise. So for a lot of our LinkedIn clients, we like to create an audience where the source is LinkedIn and the medium is whatever we have set for that specific client. So then this would be one example of an audience created from any LinkedIn ads visitor. So instead of trying to get in front of the user again with LinkedIn, which is more expensive, now I can do it with Google Display, possibly YouTube remarketing, possibly Discover, and re-engage with the user in a much more affordable way. And we do this with many more channels besides LinkedIn. If I X out of those, you can also see a specific campaign. This is just our demo account, so we don't have a ton showing up. But if you have labeled specific ad campaigns, especially from Google ads, they will show up here. So if you know a visitor came in from a specific campaign, you have a much better idea of the user intent. You can make a very specific remarketing audience and then get in front of the user again with a honed in message. Okay, but I'm not saving that one. Many people might look at creating a custom audience and there are a lot of options. So right away we see we're gonna include users when, and then we have to add our first condition. And we see a lot of options. The one up top that I have used frequently is events. So these are the events that are recorded within GA4. So I could say include users who've started watching one of the videos that we have embedded on our website. And we see the audience summary is in place, but you can also add on to this audience, either make it bigger or make the audience more specific. And we can do that with the or or and buttons. So I can make an audience of include users when they started a video on our website or, and then I can add in another condition. I can look at adding in the specific demographics. There's a variety of e-commerce categories, looking at specific conversion events. There's gaming, I'm gonna skip over that one. A few general audiences, a few common ones are percent scrolled on the page as well as search terms. We see geography, specific link events. 
specific page identifiers like the title, the page location, there's host name, platform and device. We saw a good amount of that earlier. You see publisher, session information, specific time, traffic source. See a good amount of options there, specific user information, and even video information. So there were many options under each of these categories that I didn't select. Let me choose page, maybe page title. So I have to add in a filter. This is the page title of our blog, and I'm okay saying that they visited at any point in time. Click apply, and then the users in our audience went up. Again, I'm telling GA4, build an audience of users if they've started playing a video, embedded on our website, or they visited the blog page. To make it more specific, you can go up to and, choose another condition. Let's say for geography, choose continent, add my filter at any point in time and click apply. And we saw in the summary section, the users in this audience went down because I made my audience more specific. So this one's telling GA4, make an audience of users who started a video on my website or visited the blog page, but they have to be from the America's continent. And you can continue to add as many or or and statements as you want. You can also look at adding specific sequences. If you want to build an audience in a specific order, for example, ignore the top portion here. Let's pretend we're just starting with this first sequence. So you can create an audience saying maybe the first condition is going to be anyone who visited from a Facebook ad. Then you can add in a second sequence and saying, okay, after they visited the Facebook ad, they downloaded a PDF or white paper on the site. And you'd be able to do that by a specific event if you have proper conversion and event tracking set up. But it has to be done in that specific order. You can also see that there's timers. If you turn it on, changing the time frame to just days, then the audience would say, okay, after they came from a Facebook ad, did they download this PDF or white paper within five days? If they did, maybe I think that's a more qualified, higher level lead. And then I'd want that audience to get back in front of them with possibly a more aggressive ad message to do the deeper conversion action. Let me just get rid of a few things, but we see that there are options to add other condition groups. You can look at groups you want to exclude, very customizable. I'm gonna get rid of these again. Sorry, I just wanted to show you certain things. But then here's an interesting feature, the audience trigger. If you click create new, you can create a new event name. If I click on the button here, it's gonna log an event for every time a user was added to the audience. If I save it, that'll start showing up within our events report. And then it's up to you if you wanna add that event as a specific conversion. Before I save it, I'm just gonna name this audience and then I'm gonna save it. And there we have our new audience. In our case, we don't get a ton of site visitors. It's going to take a little time to build. So then after you've created all the audience that you would like to use for remarketing within Google Ads, the next step would be to make sure that you have GA4 linked with Google Ads. And there's a few ways that you can do it. In GA4, you can head down to the little gear in the lower left-hand corner. There we see it's admin. And then in your property column towards the bottom, click on Google Ads links. We already have ours linked up, but if you're linking for the first time, just click on the blue link button. You'll be able to choose your Google Ads accounts, configure your settings, review and submit it. It's really not much I can do because we already have ours linked. The second way that you can link GA4 with Google Ads is to do it from your Google Ads tools and settings. Let me show you one example. We're in our Google Ads account. Tools and settings is in your top navigation. If you click and open it, straight below under setup, there's linked accounts. Since we already have ours linked, it's already showing up under linked accounts, but for our first time linking, it's gonna be down here in the from Google section. In your case, you'd click on details. It's gonna look similar to when I do the manage and link. Everything I've blurred out are other client GA4 accounts, but under actions, it'll say link. You'd be able to click on it and link the properties. The thing I have to note is that you need to be an admin on both the GA4 property as well as the Google Ads account. Once you have GA4 linked with Google Ads, you can go back up to Tools and Settings. After you open it under Shared Library, you can go to Audience Manager. To look specifically at just GA4 audiences, go to Add Filter, and then I'm going to search for Source. If we choose the Source option, we want to scroll down until we see GA4 and Firebase. I'm going to select it, hit Apply. Oh, I tried to sort it differently because I wanted to show the two that were automatically created in the first and third row. And then the other two audiences in the second and fourth row were the ones I created a while ago. Since I just created the content engagement audience that I just saved, it's not showing up here yet. Give it some time. Most likely it's going to be a lot quicker for you because I'm assuming your website gets a lot more visits than ours. Once you've built up enough users in your audience to be eligible to use in the specific campaign types, you'll be able to start using your GA4 audiences for any remarketing campaigns. And that's pretty much it. It is fairly easy to create audiences in GA4. 
I know I could cover a variety of types of audiences you can create in GA4. There's just not enough time and every account is different in terms of what they would like to track as an audience. So make sure that you have a GA4 property set up on your website, head on over to the configure section and start building as many valuable audiences that you are already using in your universal analytics properties. Make sure that your accounts are linked so when Universal Analytics stops serving in July of 2023, you won't see any flat lines in any remarketing ad groups using analytics audiences. If you have any questions on either linking the properties or certain audiences you can create, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.